at the end of the day, uh, this had been through the British courts, it had gone to the Court of Appeal, and it was cleared to go. And yet, it's an 11th hour intervention from the ECHR in a post-Brexit Britain. Fascinating quandary here. Um, who, who governs this country, in your opinion? Yes, I mean, that, that is an issue. We had seen a really detailed approach by the three layers of our legal system. We had seen the High Court addressing this. We had seen uh, Lord Justice Singh in the Court of Appeal do a, a brilliant uh, immediate... I mean, he, he did live law, so he, he gave a, an, an immediate judgment uh, on this and its complexity, and, 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 and he, was, he, he, he was vindicated when the Supreme Court agreed with him. And from a traditional point of view within our legal system, that was all done. And then right at the last minute last night, in comes the uh, European Court of Human Rights. And that is surprising under their own uh, test. This is what they call interim measures. And under their own test, it's supposed to be a very high bar for them to actually get involved in stuff. But uh, nonetheless, they have uh, waded in and stopped the flight. And that is... Well, that, that is... I mean, that is interesting. And um, it adds an additional layer of complexity to how things function in this country yeah. and how law functions. I, go on. Here's my point. Yeah. Right. So we listen to this and we say, oh, yes, they weighed in and whatever, and you ask the question, who governs this country? Stephen, what if we just ignored what they said and took off last night? Goodness, don't, don't, don't start with the easy questions. Um, in theory, we would then be open to some form of discipline by the European Court of Human Rights. I'm not entirely sure what form that sort of punishment, if you like, would take, but we have voluntarily, as a country, decided to be bound by this court, so we are showing it due deference and respect because we have chosen to do that. That is our choice. And I, I think it's right that that's highlighted, that everybody knows that. Um, it's not essential that we're members of it. Um, many uh, sophisticated Western democracies are not under the jurisdiction of this court. It's up to us whether or not we want to be. But do you uh, think this might change that, Steve? Sorry to interrupt you, but do you think, given that, you know, the government who've been <laughs> voted in on a mandate to try and get a grip of of migration and, and illegal immigration, I should say, and have been, you know, probably got a great deal of pop popular support for this policy. Do you think this might mean that British people say, we don't want to be a part of the ECHR anymore, we're in post-Brexit Britain? In fact, could this be a bit of a knee-jerk response that we say, we're going we're gonna to leave? Well, what the British people say about the European Court of Human Rights and our continuing membership of the convention is up to the British people. And it is entirely possible that they may take a view on this, given what has happened. Uh, and they're entirely, they're, they're absolutely entitled to do it. What I don't want to do and what I won't do is tell the British people how they ought to think about the European Court of uh, Human Rights. It's, it's absolutely not for lawyers to tell people what they should do as their politics and that's a, a theme i return to uh, again and again and again and all i can do is explain what has happened so that people are aware yeah. and then they can make up their own political choices welcome to the gb news youtube channel you can watch us live 24 hours a day catch up on your favorite shows and join in the conversation in the comments below don't forget to subscribe and you'll never miss any of our exclusive content.